Hello everyone, this is an audio recording for the visually impaired student from the book Pradeep Physical Chemistry Volume 2 by Dr. S.C. Khetrapal Thermodynamics Part 2 Introduction Need for the second law and different statement of the law The first law of thermodynamics had certain serious limitation to overcome this limitation a strong need was therefore failed to introduce another law called the second law of thermodynamics a few limitation of the first law and consequences some definition given to the second law are briefly given below first is a major limitation of the first law of thermodynamics is that it may really indicate that in any process there is an exact equivalence between the various form of energy involved but it pro provides no information concerning the feasibility of the process is that whether the process is possible or not for example the first law does not indicate whether heat can flow from a cold and to a hot and or not all that it tell is that if this process occurred the heat energy gained by one end would be exactly equal to that lost by the other end Similarly, the first law does not tell whether a gas can diffuse from low pressure to high pressure or water can itself run uphill, etc. The second law supply answer to the above question by stating that all spontaneous process like the flow of heat from hot and to cold and diffusion of gas from high pressure to low pressure or the flow of water down a hill, etc. are thermodynamically reversible. First definition. The term spontaneous process used in the above definition means a process which can take place without the help of any external agency. All natural processes, some of which are mentioned in the definition above, are spontaneous process. Above, it may be mentioned here. Here that the spont uh, term spontaneous does not give any idea of the rate of process is that whether the process takes place fast or slowly all that it implies is that a process can occur without the help of an external agency second definition is the second first law state that when heat is converted into work the work obtained is equivalent to the heat absorbed however it has been seen from experience that the heat absorbed cannot be completely converted into work without leaving some change in the system or the surrounding for example the heat produced in a locomotive is not fully utilized in running the train a part of it is is it you lost to the surrounding or wasted in overcoming the friction hence the second law is also state as follows the complete conversion of heat into work is impossible without leaving some effect elsewhere. Second definition. Beside the above definition, a number of other definitions have also been given to the second law of thermodynamics. The two important one are it is impossible to construct a machine functioning in cycle which can convert heat completely into the equivalent amount of work without producing some change elsewhere. Third definition. Without the use of an external agency, heat cannot by itself pass from a colder to a hotter body. Fourth definition. The term functioning in cycle is introduced in the above definition to indicate that the machine must return to the its original state at regular interval so that it can function continuously. Further, it may be recalled that in an isothermal reversible expansion of an ideal gas delta U is equal to zero so that Q is equal to W is that work done is exactly equal to the heat absorbed by the system. In other words, in this process, heat is completely converted into work. However, it is important to observe that this conversion is occupied by an increase in volume of the gas so that the system has undergo a change. A number of other definitions have also been given to the second law of thermodynamics which we will come across in the succeeding section of this chapter. The fraction of the heat absorbed by a machine that is that it can transform into work is called the efficiency of the machine. Thus if Q is the heat absorbed and W is the work done then the efficiency of the machine is given by neta is equal to W by Q. The machine used for the conversion of heat into work is called heat engine. In order to bring about this conversion, the engine absorbs heat from a heat reservoir at a higher temperature called the source. Convert a part of it into work and return the remainder to the heat reservoir at a lower temperature called the sink. 
Carnot cycle and its efficiency. In order to calculate the efficiency of any heat engine, Sadi Carnot in 1824 devised a technique called Carnot cycle. A cycle is a process in which a system returns to its original state after a number of successive changes. A process conducted in this manner is called a cyclic process. The engine chosen for Carnot called Carnot engine for the purpose of the calculation of the efficiency was a hypothetical one and cannot be achieved in actual practice. It was selected because it could be subjected to simple thermodynamic treatment. It consists of a cylinder containing one mole of an ideal gas as a working substance and fitted with weightless frictionless piston so that all the operation in the cycle are carried out reversibly for this reason it is also called reversible heat engine the cylinder is supposed to the insulated on all side except all at the bottom so that heat can flow to or from the system only through the bottom further it is supposed that there are two heat reservoir one at a higher temperature t2 called the source and the other at a lower temperature t1 called the sink if some operation is carried out by placing the cylinder in the source or the sink it can exchange heat with it and hence the temperature remains constant so that the process is isothermal on the other hand if during an operation the cylinder is placed on an insulating material no heat exchange can takes place between the system and the surrounding and hence the process is adiabatic the carnot cycle consists of four different operation which can be represented on a pressure volume diagram sometimes called a indicator diagram as shown in figure 2.1 these operation are carried out as shown in figure 2.2 and are briefly described below alternatively the cylinder may have conducting wall as well as the bottom and the source and the sink may be two thermostat for carrying out isothermal process the cylinder may be placed in the thermostat for carrying out adiabatic process the cylinder may be placed in perfectly non conducting jacket isothermal expansion The cylinder placed one mole the cylinder containing one mole of the ideal gas occupying a volume V1 is placed in contact with the source heat reservoir at temperature T2 the gas absorb heat Q2 from the source and expand isothermally and reversibly till its volume has increased to V2 the path of the process is represented by the isothermal curve AB since the gas is ideal the work done w1 by 1 mole of the ideal gas will be given by minus w1 is equal to rt2 ln of v2 by v1 further for an ideal gas the work done is given equal to the heat absorbed q2 so that minus w1 is equal to q2 which is equal to rt2 ln of v2 by v1 here w1 have been taken as negative and q2 as positive by the latest si convention of science adiabatic expansion the cylinder is now removed from the source and placed in perfectly insulating material so that the gas now expand adiabatically and reversibly work is done in the expansion but since no heat enter or leave the system the temperature must fall the reversible adiabatic expansion is continued till the temperature has fallen to t1 which is the temperature of the sink suppose the corresponding volume becomes v3 the path is shown by the adiabatic curve bc the work done w2 will be given by minus w2 is equal to cv t1 minus t2 which is equal to minus cv t2 minus t1 where cv is the heat capacity of the ideal gas here again w2 is negative by the usual convention of sign isothermal compression the cylinder is now removed from the insulating material and placed in in contact with the sink is at the heat reservoir at the lower temperature t1 the gas is compressed isothermally and reversibly till the volume decreased from v3 to v4 the process is represented by the path cd in figure 2.1 the work done is both taken as positive by the usual convention of sign and hence will be given by w2 is equal to rt1 ln of v4 by v3 during the operation an amount of heat q1 exactly equal to w2 will returns to the sink at t1 is that heat has been given out by the system using the appropriate convention of sign q1 will be negative and w3 will be positive so that 
माइनस क्यू वन इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू थ्री विच इज इक्वल टू आर टी वन एल एन ऑफ वी फोर बाई वी थ्री एडियाबैटिक कंप्रेशन द सिलेंडर इज नाउ रिमूव फ्रॉम द सिंक एंड प्लेसड अगेन ऑन द इंसुलेटिंग मटीरियल द गैस इज दैन कंप्रेसड एडियाबैटिकली एंड रिवर्सिबली एलोंग डी ए टिल द इनिशियल स्टेट ए इज रिगेन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द गैस राइज फ्रॉम टी वन टू टी टू द वर्क डन इज पॉजिटिव बाय द कन्वेंशन ऑफ साइन एंड विल बी गिवन बाय W4 फोर इज इक्वल टू सी वी टी टू माइनस टी वन एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ विच देयर दीज फोर ऑपरेशन द सिस्टम हैज रिटर्न टू इट्स ओरिजिनल स्टेट सो दैट ए रिवर्सिबल साइकिल हैज बीन कंप्लीटेड द वर्क टर्न डब्ल्यू गिवन बाय द सिस्टम विल बी गिवन बाय डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू माइनस डब्ल्यू वन प्लस माइनस डब्ल्यू टू प्लस डब्ल्यू थ्री प्लस डब्ल्यू फोर विच इज इक्वल टू आर टी टू एल एन ऑफ वी टू बाई वी वन माइनस सी वी टी टू माइनस टी वन प्लस आर टी वन एल एन ऑफ वी फोर बाई वी थ्री प्लस सी वी टी टू माइनस टी वन दिस इज द इक्वेशन Uh, which is equal to R T two ln of V two by V one plus R T one ln of V four by V three equation eight. Since V one and V four lie on an adiabatic curve and V three and V two lie on an another curve, it follows that V four by V one uh, raised to power gamma minus one is equal to T two T two by T one equation nine and V three by V two. रेज टू पावर गामा माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू टी टू बाई टी वन दिस इज इक्वेशन टेन कंपेयरिंग इक्वेशन नाइन एंड टेन वी गेट वी फोर बाय वी वन गामा माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू वी थ्री बाय वी टू रेज टू पावर गामा माइनस वन और वी फोर बाय वी वन विच इज इक्वल टू वी थ्री बाय वी टू और वी फोर बाय वी थ्री इज इक्वल टू वी वन बाय वी टू पुटिंग दिस वैल्यू इन इक्वेशन एट वी गेट इज इक्वल टू आर टी टू एल एन ऑफ वी टू बाई वी वन प्लस आर टी वन एल एन ऑफ वी वन बाई वी टू विच इज इक्वल टू आर टी टू एल एन ऑफ वी टू बाई वी वन माइनस आर टी वन एल एन ऑफ वी टू बाई वी वन विच इज इक्वल टू आर टी टू माइनस टी वन एल एन ऑफ वी टू बाई वी वन दिस इज इक्वेशन ट्वेल्व डिवाइडिंग इक्वेशन ट्वेल्व बाई इक्वेशन टू वी गेट डब्ल्यू बाई क्यू टू इज इक्वल टू टी टू माइनस टी वन डिवाइड बाई टी टू विच गिव द एफिशियंसी ऑफ द कार्नोट साइकिल और इंजन कार्नोट थ्योरम फ्रॉम इक्वेशन थर्टीन इट इज क्लियर दैट द एफिशियंसी ऑफ ए रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन डिपेंड ऑन ओनली द डिपेंड ओनली अपॉन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द सोर्स एंड द सोर्स एंड इज इंडिपेंडेंट एंड द सिंक एंड इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ द वर्किंग सब्सटांस अनादर इंपॉर्टेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन टू बी मेड फ्रॉम द अबोव डेरिवेशन इज दैट द वर्क डन इन द साइकल इज ओनली द वन इन्वॉल्व इन द आइसोसर्मल ऑपरेशन बिकॉज द वर्क डन इन द एडियाबैटिक ऑपरेशन टू एंड फोर कैंसिल वन अनादर फर्दर एज डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर द वर्क डन इन ए रिवर्सिबल आइसोथर्मल एक्सपेंशन फ्रॉम ए टू बी इज मैक्सिमम वेर इज अ वर्क डन ऑन द गैस ड्यूरिंग द रिवर्सिबल आइसोथर्मल कंप्रेशन फ्रॉम सी टू डी इज मिनिमम हैंज द टोटल वर्क डन बाय द सिस्टम इज दैट द रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन और कार्नोट इंजन इज मैक्सिमम फॉर द स्पेसिफाइड कंडीशन एंड देयर फॉर द एफिशियंसी इज मैक्सिमम द रिजल्ट दैट फॉलोड फ्रॉम द कार्नोट साइकिल एज डिराइव एंड डिस्कस्ड इन इक्वेशन एटीन अबोव इज कॉल्ड द कार्नोट थ्योरम इट मे बी स्टेट एज फॉलो द एफिशियंसी ऑफ ए रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन डिपेंड ओनली ऑन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द सोर्स एंड द सिंक एंड इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ द वर्किंग सब्सटांस इन अदर वर्ड ऑल रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन वर्किंग बिटवीन द सेम टू टेम्परेचर हैव द सेम एफिशियंसी फर्दर इट स्टेट दैट द एफिशियंसी ऑफ ए रिवर्सिबल हीट इंजन इज मैक्सिमम फॉर द गिवन टेम्परेचर सिंस द क्वान्टिटी टी टू माइनस टी वन डिवाइड बाई टी टू इज ऑलवेज लेस दैन यूनिटी द एफिशियंसी ऑफ द हीट इंजन इज ट्रू इज दज ऑलवेज लेस दैन यूनिटी In view of the above discussion, the second law of thermodynamics is sometimes defined as follow: a heat engine absorb a certain amount of heat from the source, convert a part of it into work, and return the rest of to the sink. In other words, it is impossible to convert heat completely into work. Further, combine equation two, five, and eight. We get W is equal to Q two minus Q one. Is that the net work done by the system is equal to the net heat absorbed by the system? Putting the value of W in equation thirteen, we get Q two minus Q one divided by Q two is equal to T two minus T one divided by T two. 
Hence the efficiency of a heat engine may be given by any one of the following expression. Neta is equal to W by Q2 which is equal to Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q2 which is equal to T2 minus T1 divided by T2. Thus this result derived uh, uh, for a reversible Carnot cycle leads to the introduction of a new thermodynamic term called entropy as session in as discussed in session 2.5. Thermodynamic scale of temperature. From our earlier study, we are familiar that a thermometer is constructed most commonly by taking suitable amount of mercury in a glass bulb at the end of a capillary tube and marking zero when it is placed in contact with the eyes and making 100 when it is placed in boiling water. The length between the two points is divided into 100 equal part called degrees the scale of temperature thus obtained is called celsius scale of temperature however because because different liquid expand to different extent is that their coefficient of expansion are different and also they do not expand uniformly over a given range thermometer constructed by using different liquid will show different numerical values of temperature between the, their fixed point for example a body may show a temperature of 28.7 degrees celsius with mercury thermometer but may show 28.8 degrees celsius with an alcohol thermometer the problem was solved by study of properties of gases it was found that an ideal gas or a perfect gas ceases to exist at a temperature of minus 273.15 degrees celsius this temperature was called zero degree absolute the scale developed on this basis is called perfect gas temperature scale and is found to be independent of the ideal gas taken however based on the efficiency of a reversible heat engine lord kelvin was the first to develop a scale of temperature that was independent of the temperature of the that was independent of the nature of the gas taken in the heat engine this scale of temperature is called thermodynamic scale of temperature or kelvin scale of temperature it is found to be identical with the ideal gas temperature scale the basis of the up development of this scale is briefly described below suppose there are two constant temperature heat reservoir one acting as a source and the other as a sink and a reversible heat engine operate between them the temperature of each reservoir on the new scale may be taken as proportional to the quantity of heat absorbed from the source and the heat loss to the sink both of which can be measured if q2 is a heat transfer from the source is that heat reservoir at higher temperature and q1 is a heat transfer in the sink reservoir at lower temperature than it if their temperature on the thermodynamics or Kelvin scale are represented by theta2 and theta1 respectively we shall have q2 by q1 is equal to theta2 minus theta2 divided by theta1 that is equation 1. Thus this ratio of two temperature that has been defined in a manner independent of the nature of the thermometric thermo substances taking the reciprocal of both sides of equation 1 and subtracting the result from unity we get 1 minus q1 by q2 is equal to 1 minus theta1 by theta2 or q2 minus q1 divided by q2 is equal to theta2 minus theta1 divided by q theta2 putting theta1 is equal to 0 is at 0 of the new scale we get q2 minus q1 divided by q2 is equal to 1 this implies that zero on the Kelvin scale is the temperature of the sink for the reversible heat engine whose efficiency is unity. Is that which is capable of converting heat completely into work but from equation 14 page number 86 it may be seen that it is possible only at absolute zero on the ideal gas scale of temperature. This leads to the conclusion that the Kelvin scale and the gas scale are identical provided the gas is ideal the temperature on the thermodynamic scale are therefore expressed in terms of degree kelvin further it has been found that if the lower fixed temperature is taken as equal to that of triple point of water with 273.16 kelvin then kelvin is exactly equal to celsius degree for this reason the temperature on the absolute scale in which the melting point of ice is taken as 273.16 degree celsius degree is often referred to as a degree kelvin it may be concluded that thermodynamic scale of temperature as defined on the basis of second law of thermodynamics is more basic than that based on the ideal gas because any fluid can be used however the ideal gas scale is more practical for laboratory use concept of entropy entropy as a state function for a reversible carnot cycle 
वर्किंग बिटवीन टेम्परेचर टी टू एंड टी वन इट हैज बीन सीन दैट क्यू टू माइनस क्यू वन डिवाइड बाई क्यू टू इज इक्वल टू टी टू माइनस टी वन डिवाइड बाई टी टू दैट इज इक्वेशन वन वेयर क्यू टू इज द हीट एब्जोर्व आइसोथर्मली एंड रिवर्सिबली एट टेम्परेचर टी टू एंड क्यू वन इज द हीट लॉस्ट आइसोथर्मली एंड रिवर्सिबली एट टेम्परेचर टी वन द वो इक्वेशन में भी सिंप्लीफाइड एज वन माइनस क्यू वन डिवाइड बाई क्यू टू इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस टी वन डिवाइड बाई टी टू और क्यू टू बाई टी वन इज इक्वल टू क्यू वन बाई टी वन दैट इज इक्वेशन टू और क्यू क्यू बाई टी इज इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट दस वी कंक्लूड दैट हीट ऑब्जर्व ओरली लोस्ट आइसोथर्मली एंड रिवर्सिबली डिवाइडेड बाय द एब्सोल्यूट टेम्परेचर एट विच द हीट इज एब्जॉर्व और लॉस्ट इन ए कॉन्स्टेंट क्वान्टिटी फॉर ए पार्टिकुलर सिस्टम फर्दर इन इक्वेशन टू क्यू टू इज द हीट एब्जॉर्व एट टेम्परेचर टी टू एंड क्यू वन इज द हीट लॉस्ट एट टेम्परेचर टी वन इफ क्यू वन वेयर वेयर द हीट एब्जॉर्ब एट टेम्परेचर टी वन इक्वेशन टू वुड बी रिटर्न एज क्यू टू बाई टी टू इज इक्वल टू माइनस क्यू वन बाई टी वन और क्यू टू बाई टी टू प्लस क्यू वन बाई टी वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज दैट समेशन ऑफ क्यू बाई टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो दैट इज इक्वेशन थ्री नाउ कंसिडर एन रिवर्सिबल साइकिल ए बी ए इट मे बी रिगार्डेड एज बींग मेड अप ऑफ ए नंबर ऑफ कार्नोट साइकिल ड्रोन अक्रॉस डायग्राम एस शोन इन फिगर टू पॉइंट थ्री स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम ए एंड गोइंग थ्रू ऑल द साइकिल सक्सेसिवली फ्रॉम ए टू बी इट मे बी इट कैन बी शोन दैट ऑल पाथ इन साइड द क्लोज कर ए बी ए कैंसिल ईच अदर लिविंग ओनली द जिगजेग पाथ विच इज ऑलमोस्ट द सेम एज द पाथ ए बी ए ऑफ द रिवर्सिबल साइकिल बाय मेकिंग ईच कार्नोट साइकिल स्मोलर एंड इंक्रीजिंग देयर नंबर इट मे बी it can be made to correspond more closely to aba the reversible cycle can therefore be regarded as made being made up of an infinite number of carnot cycle for each of these cycle we have summation of q by t is equal to 0 as above hence uh, for an infinite number of carnot cycle summation of del q by t is equal to 0 where del q is a very small quantity of the heat absorbed at temperature t during the small isothermal change of the reversible process further the above above term may be divided into two part one for the path a to b and the other for the back path b to a the summation of del q by t is equal to summation a to b del q by t plus summation b to a del q by t is equal to 0 or we may write summation a to b del q by t is equal to minus summation of b to a del q by t or q by t so a to b is equal to minus q by t b to a this implies that the total value of the quantity q by t for the path a to b is equal to the total volume value of the quantity q by t for the reverse path b to a hence it may be concluded that the quantity q by t is a state function is that its value depend only on the initial state a and the final state b and is independent of the path obviously q by t is the change in the value of the quantity for a function having same some definite value at a and b depending on the value of pressure volume and temperature this quantity or the function is called entropy and is usually represented by the symbol s thus if sa is the value of the entropy at a and sb is the value at b then we must have q by t is equal to sb minus sa is equal to del s where del s represent the total change in entropy in going from the initial state a to the final state b hence entropy may be defined as the state function the change in the value of which from the initial state to the final state is change of to the quantity q by t is that the total heat absorbed reversibly and isothermally in going from the initial state to the final state divided by the absolute temperature at which the heat is absorbed from equation 6 the entropy change may be defined directly as the quantity of heat absorbed isothermally and reversibly divided by the absolute temperature t at which the heat is absorbed it is important to note that as entropy is a state function therefore the value of entropy change during a process should not depend on the path is that whether the heat is absorbed reversibly or irreversibly during the process however since the derivation of the above result is based on carnot cycle in which the heat is absorbed reversibly therefore for the expression 6 for the entropy change is valid only when the heat is absorbed reversibly thus it is better to use the symbol del q reversible rev in place of q the expression 6 may therefore be written as delta s is equal to q rev divided by t further as entropy as a state function a small change in its value can represented by ds hence we may write ds is equal to q reversible divided by t unit of entropy from the expression delta s divided by 
delta s is equal to q by t it is obvious that the unit of entropy will be calorie per degree if heat is expressed in calories therefore entropy is an extensive property it is therefore important to mention the quantity of the substance involved it is usually expressed for one mole of the substance hence the entropy unit are calorie per degree per mole if heat is measured in joule the unit of entropy will be joule per degree per mole entropy change in the irreversible process suppose a process occur under completely reversible condition is that the heat is absorbed by the system reversibly and the heat is lost by the surrounding also reversibly if q reversible is the heat absorbed by the system reversibly then the heat lost by the surrounding will also be q reversible if the process takes place isothermally at the absolute temperature t then uh, first is entropy change of the system will be given by delta s system is equal to q reversible by t entropy change of the surrounding will be given by delta s surrounding is equal to minus q reversible divided by t then total entropy change for the combined system and the surrounding will be delta s system plus delta s surrounding is equal to q reversible by t minus q reversible by t is equal to zero thus we may conclude that in a reversible process the net entropy change for the combined system and the surrounding is zero is that there is no net change in the entropy entropy change in a irreversible in an irreversible process if any part of the process is irreversible the process as a whole is irreversible suppose that the total heat lost by the surrounding is q irreversible this heat will be absorbed by the system but the entropy change of the system does not depend on the heat actually absorbed but it depend on the heat absorbed reversibly on the quantity q reversible thus if the heat is absorbed isothermally by the system at the absolute temperature t the entropy change of the system will be delta s system is equal to q reversible divided by t that is equation 1 further suppose that the loss of heat q irreversible by the surrounding takes place infinite similarly slowly is that reversibly and in in isothermally at the temperature t then the entropy change of the surrounding will be given by delta s surrounding is equal to minus q irreversible divided by t the total entropy change for the combined system and the surrounding will therefore be delta s system plus delta s surrounding is equal to q reversible by t minus q irreversible by t that is equation 3 now we know that the work done in a reversible process is the maximum work is that q reversible is greater than q Uh, w reversible is greater than W E reversible. That is equation four. Further, as the internal energy U is the state function, the value of delta U is same whether the process is carried out reversibly or irreversibly. Hence, w, delta U is equal to Q reversible minus W reversible, which is equal to Q E reversible minus W E reversible. That is equation five. Combining result four and five, we conclude that Q reversible is greater than Q E reversible. Is that Q reversible by T greater than Q E reversible by T? That is equation seven or Q reversible. by t minus q irreversible by t is greater than 0 combine this result with the Uh, result with the result given in equation three, we observe that delta s system plus delta s surrounding is greater than zero. That is equation nine. Thus, we may conclude that in an irreversible process, the entropy change for the combined system and the surrounding is greater than zero. Is that an irreversible process is accompanied by an in net increase of entropy? Since all spontaneous processes are thermodynamically irreversible, first definition of first, second law of thermodynamics it may state that all spontaneous process are accompanied by a net increase of entropy this is also one of the very common statement of the second law of thermodynamics this result for the entropy change in a reversible process and that is an irreversible process may be combined together and put in the form delta s system plus delta s surrounding is greater equal to 0 where the sign equal to stand for the reversible process and the sign greater than for the irreversible process the exact calculation of total entropy change delta s total during an irreversible process is that when heat from flow from uh, a body b at a higher temperature t2 to a body a at lower temperature t1 when brought in contact with it may be carried out as follows suppose the heat lost by the body b is represented as q reversible the flow of heat may be allowed to take place infinite similarly slowly so that it 
is absorbed by the body a reversibly and isothermally at t which may be represented as q reversible the entropy change of the body b also depend only on q reversible hence entropy change of body b is equal to minus q reversible by t2 entropy change of body a is equal to plus q reversible by t1 minus sign indicate decrease in entropy while positive sign indicate increase delta s total is equal to minus q reversible by t2 plus q reversible by t1 is equal to q reversible 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 the combined system and the surrounding is sometimes called an isolated system the result derived in this session the are thus for the isolated system negative sign with w has been used as it is the work of expansion clausius inequality as discussed above for the anisothermal process the result given in equation 9 may be written as delta s system plus delta s surrounding is greater than 0 that is equation 1 or delta s system greater than minus delta s surrounding also for equation 2 we have delta s surrounding which is equal to minus q by t that is equation 3 putting this value in equation 2 above we get delta s system is greater than q by t for small changes the above equation may be uh, written as delta s system ds system is greater than minus ds surrounding that is equation 5 or ds system is greater than delta q by t dq by t expression 4 and 6 are called clausius inequality this equation show that a reversible process are accompanied by increase of entropy this is further illustrated with the help of the following two example of irreversible process spontaneous first is the spontaneous expansion a part irreversible ad irreversible adiabatic expansion suppose the system undergoes irreversible adiabatic change then dq is delta q, dq is equal to 0 hence by clausius inequality ds system is greater than 0 the entropy of the system has increased further as dq is equal to 0 part a irreversible adiabatic expansion suppose the system undergo irreversible adiabatic change then D, dq is equal to 0 hence by clausius inequality ds system is greater than 0 is that the entropy of the system has increased further as dq is equal to 0 this means that no heat is transfer into the surrounding thus ds surrounding is equal to 0 hence total entropy change ds total is equal to ds system plus ds surrounding which is equal to ds system but ds system is greater than 0 as explained hence ds total is greater than 0 second is the irreversible isothermal expansion we know that when a perfect gas expand isothermally it its internal energy remains constant is that du is equal to 0 hence according to first law of thermodynamics du is equal to dq plus dw dq plus dw is equal to 0 or dq is equal to minus dw that is equation 7 if the gas expand freely into vacuum no work is done so that dw is equal to 0 substituting in equation 7 gives dq is equal to 0 hence by clausius inequality ds system is greater than 0 further as dq is equal to 0 it is implies that ds surrounding is equal to 0 hence the total entropy change as in the above case is that ds total is greater than 0 second is the spontaneous cooling suppose heat is transferred from one system at a higher temperature t2 called the source to another system at a lower temperature t1 called the sink if heat dq leaves the source and the enter the sink entropy change of the source is minus dq by t2 entropy change of the sink plus dq by t1 total entropy change ds total is equal to dq by t1 minus dq by t2 that is equal to dq1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 as d1 is very very greater than t1 ds total is equal to positive is that cooling transfer of heat from hot body to cold body is accompanied by increase of entropy entropy change of the universe since all spontaneous process occurring in nature are thermodynamically irreversible these are accompanied by increase of entropy as discussed in session 2.7 above hence it may be concluded that the entropy of the universe is continuously increasing this result is sometimes taken as another statement of the second law of thermodynamics thus the main ideas of the first and the second law of thermodynamics may be summed up in the following statement the energy of the universe is constant whereas the entropy of the universe is continuously increasing and tends to a maximum entropy change for an ideal gas with the 
change in pressure volume and temperature consider and uh, one consider one mole of an idle gas enclosed in an cylinder fitted with frictionless piston if an infinite simply small amount of heat del q reversible is supplied to the system reversibly and isothermally at the temperature t then the entropy change accompanying the process will be given by ds is equal to del q reversible divided by t according to first law of thermodynamics for an infinite simul process del q is equal to du minus del w if the process is carried out reversibly equation 2 may be written as del q reversible is equal to du minus del w therefore if the work is restricted to the work of expansion as is usually the case for processes considered in chemical thermodynamics then minus d del w is equal to pdv that is the equation for where dv is the small increase in the volume and p is the pressure of the system which is very nearly equal to the external pressure because the process is carried out reversibly putting the value of del w from equation 4 in equation 3 we get del q reversible is equal to du plus pdv that is equation 5 substituting this value in equation 1 we get ds is equal to du plus pdv divided by t or it may be uh, written as tds is equal to du plus pdv now for one mole of an ideal gas we know that cv is equal to du by dt and uh, du is equal to cv dt that is equation 7 where cv is the molar heat capacity at constant volume and pv is equal to rt is that p is equal to rt by v idle gas equation and that is equation 8 where v is the volume of the system at temperature t and pressure p and r is a gas constant putting this value du and p from equation 7 and 8 in equation 6 we get tds is equal to cv dt plus rt by v into dv or ds is equal to cv dt by t plus r dv by v that is equation 9 or if the volume changes from v1 to v v1 to v2 then the temperature changes from t1 to t2 then the entropy change accompanying the complete process will be given by ds Uh, limit tending to s1 to s2 which is equal to cv dt by t limit tending t1 to t2 plus r dv by v limit tending v1 to v2 that is equation 10 assuming that cv remains constant in the temperature range c t1 to t2 equation 10 may be written as integration of ds where limit tend s1 to t2 which is equal to cv uh, integration of dt by t where limit tends t1 to t2 plus r integration of dv by v where limit tends v1 to v2 or delta s is equal to cv ln of t1 by t t2 by t1 plus r ln of v2 by v1 that is equation 11 this is an expression for the calculation of entropy change of one mole of an idle gas accompanying a process when temperature changes from t1 to t2 and the volume changes from v1 to v2 further for one mole of an idle gas we may write p1 v1 is equal to rt1 for the initial state that is equation 12 and p2 v2 is equal to rt2 for the final state that is equation 13 dividing equation 13 by equation 12 we get p2 v2 divided by p1 v1 is equal to t2 by t1 or v2 by v1 is equal to t2 p1 divided by t1 p2 putting this value in equation 11 we get delta s is equal to cv ln of t2 by t1 plus r ln of t2 p1 divided by t1 p2 further we know that cp minus cv is equal to r or cv is equal to cp minus r putting this value in equation 15 we get delta s is equal to cp minus r into ln of t2 by t1 plus r ln t2 p1 divided by t1 p2 is equal to cp ln of t2 by t1 minus r ln of t2 by t1 plus r ln of t2 by t1 plus r ln of p1 by p2 uh, or delta s is equal to cp ln of t2 by t1 plus r ln of p1 by p2 this is an expression for the calculation of the entropy change of one mole of the idle gas accompanying a process when and temperature changes from t1 to t2 and the pressure changes from p1 to p2 entropy change for of an idle gas in different processes equation 11 gives the entropy change for one mole of the idle gas when temperature and pressure are variable similarly equation 16 gives the entropy change of one mole of the idle gas when temperature and pressure are variable these equation are modified if condition of constant temperature pressure or volume are imposed for for example first is if temperature is kept constant for isothermal process t1 is equal to t2 equation 11 and 16 are reduced to delta s is equal to r ln of v2 by v1 is equal to r ln of p1 by p2 
Alternatively, this expression can be derived directly as follows: ds is equal to q reversible by t, with uh, minus w max is equal to q reversible is equal to nRT ln of v2 by v1 that is equation 19 is equal to nRT ln of p1 by p2 that is equation 20. Substituting the value of q reversible from equation 19 and 20 in equation 18 and putting n is equal to 1 for 1 mono of the ideal gas, we get the resulting equation in equation 17. If the pressure is kept constant for isobaric process P1 is equal to P2, equation 16 is therefore modified to delta S is equal to Cp ln of T2 by T1. If volume is kept constant for isochoric process V1 is equal to V2, then equation 11 is written uh, therefore reduced to delta S is equal to Cv ln of T2 by T1. Note carefully that uh, all the expression derived above uh, for the calculation of entropy change ds involved uh, natural logarithms since logarithms table commonly used r to the base 10 in applying this formula in x has to be uh, first replaced by 2.303 log x where x is quantity like t2 by t1 v2 by v1 etc further note that if a gas expands reversibly but adiabatically then as for such a process uh, q reversible is equal to 0 th therefore delta s is equal to 0 Entropy change during physical change, phase change. A change of phase occur in any one of the following changes. When solid melt or conversely when a liquid freezes. Second is the when a liquid evaporate or conversely when a gas condenses. Third is when one crystalline form changes into another. When the change of the phase commences, the temperature remains constant till the change of the phase is completed. The heat and bold evolved or absorbed during the phase change does not thus does not change the temperature and is therefore called latent heat if the further termed as latent heat of melting latent heat of vaporization etc depending on the nature of the process involved in general if delta l h is the latent heat and t is the temperature at which the changes of phase occur the entropy change accompanying the phase change will be given by ds is equal to delta l h divided by t the entropy change ds is termed as entropy of melting entropy of vaporization etc depending on the nature of the process for example we have entropy of melting or fusion Delta S F is equal to delta fusion H divided by T F where delta F fusion H is the latent heat of fusion melting and T F is the melting fusion temperature. Entropy of vaporization delta S V is equal to delta vaporization H divided by T B where delta vaporization H is the latent heat of vaporization and T B is the boiling temperature. It may be mentioned here that processes like melting and evaporation involve absorption of heat which is taken as a positive by the convention of sign. Therefore, delta S for these processes is positive is that these processes are accompanied by increase of entropy. On the other hand, the reverse processes like freezing and condensation involve evaluation of heat which is taken as negative. Therefore, for these processes, delta S is negative is that these processes are accompanied by decrease of entropy. It may be remembered as discussed earlier that if heat is measured in calories the unit of entropy change our calorie per degree per mole if it is measured in joule the entropy will be joule per degree per moles entropy change on mixing of idle gas suppose at constant temperature and one uh, number of moles mole of an idle gas one at a initial pressure p1 note are mixed with n2 mole of another idle gas 2 which had initial pressure p2 naught suppose after mixing their partial pressure is a in the mixture are p1 and p2 respectively now we know that at temperature constant temperature the entropy change of an idle gas when its pressure changes from initial state p i to final pressure pf is given by delta s is equal to r ln of p i divided by pf mole inverse Entropy change of the first gas when the pressure of N1 mole of the gas changes from P1 naught to P1 is given by delta S1 is equal to N1 R ln of P1 naught divided by P1 that is equation 1. Similarly, entropy change of the second gas when pressure of N2 moles of the gas changes from P2 naught to P2 is given by delta S2 is equal to N2 R ln of P2 naught divided by P2 that is equation 2. Total entropy change on mixing the two gases will be delta S mixing is equal to N1 R ln of P1 naught divided by P1 plus N2 R ln of P2 naught divided by P2 that is equation 3. If P is the total pressure of the mixture is that P is equal to P1 plus P2 and X1 and X2 are the mole fraction of gas 1 and 2 in the mixture then the Dalton law of partial pressure 
P1 is equal to x1 P and P2 is equal to x2 P. Substituting this value in equation 3, we get delta S mixing is equal to N1 R ln of P1 naught divided by x1 P plus N2 R ln of P2 naught divided by x2 P. That is equation 4. Taking the simplest case in which each gas is taken at the same initial pressure and after mixing volume of the mixture is the sum of their initial volume is that V is equal to V1 plus V2. The final pressure of the mixture will be nearly same as initial pressure of each gas is, is that P1 naught is equal to P2 naught is equal to P. Then equation 4 is simplified to the form delta S mixing is equal to minus N1 R ln of X1 minus N2 R ln of X2. Or delta S mixing is equal to minus R bracket N1 ln of X1 plus N2 ln of X2 bracket close. For a mixture of a number of idle gas, equation 5 can be generalized to the form delta S mixing is equal to minus R summation of Ni ln of Xi. To calculate the entropy change for one mole of the mixture, divide equation 5 by N1 plus N2, we get Delta S mixing is equal to minus R N1 divided by N1 plus N2 ln of X1 plus N2 divided by N1 plus N2 ln of X2 or delta S mixing is equal to minus R X1 ln of X1 plus X2 ln of X2 that is equation 7 which can be generalized to the form delta S mixing is equal to minus R summation of Xi ln of Xi that is equation 8. From the above equation, we may conclude that DS mixing is independent of temperature as Xi is greater is less than zero. Delta S mixing will always be positive. Is that mixing of gases is accompanied by increase in entropy? Physical significance of entropy is that measure of disorder. An examination of the various processes which are accompanied by a net increase of entropy shows that they are associated with an increased randomness of distribution for example first one is the melting of a solid is accompanied by a net increase of entropy as already discussed and at the same time we know that the molecule atoms or ion in a solid have fixed position and then become free to move about in the molten state this is expressed by saying that there is no disorder among the molecules atoms or ion in the solid but the disorder set in which the solid changes into liquid in other words it is state that randomness has increased second is the vaporization of liquid is accompanied by a net increase of entropy as already discussed and at the same time the disorder or the randomness also increases because the molecule of vapors are more random than the molecules in the liquid third is heating a magnetized iron needle demagnetize it because the molecule of the magnetized iron needle which were oriented in a particular fashion lost the order on heating and becomes disorder is that randomness increases all spontaneous processes like diffusion of gas flow of heat from the hot end to the cold end of an iron of an iron bar are accompanied by a net increase of entropy as well as an increase of randomness or disorder for example in the phenomenon of diffusion the two gases which are separated initially get mixed up in a random manner similarly in the flow of heat the electron present on the hot end and having higher kinetic energy rush to the cold end thereby making the distribution more random Hence, it may be concluded that entropy is a measure of randomness or disorder of the system. This concept may be further understood with the help of the following example. In a, uh, for example, in a college, when all classes are being held, all the students are sitting in their respective class and rooms and the disorder is minimum. As soon as the bell goes, the student of different classes comes out to go to the other rooms and thus get mixed up. In other words, the disorder or the randomness increases. Second is in the game of hockey or football to start with all the players take up some definite position and thus are said to be in order. As soon as the game starts, the players start running and thus they are said to have an increased randomness which increased which increases further as the game catches more and more momentum. Thank you.